Hi and welcome to my channel. I am Sleepy Bug and today we are going to play Intertwine. Sometimes I get this feeling like I'm searching for something. Something magnetic. No, that's not it. Warm? No. Something. Ugh, no use. That feeling again. What is that? Van! Sweetie, come on! Coming, Mom! I joined her as we headed home for the day. Do you have to call me sweet so loud? I am 16. I'm your mother. <laughs> Can't I show my son that I love him? Mom's everywhere. You can, it's just... Oh, embarrassing. Can't you show it more quietly? What was that? Nothing. Oh, okay. Those grass stains on the back of your shirt again. Were you laying on the ground again? Yeah. You and your dad. Just the same you two. Always with your head in the clouds. Here she goes again. What are you even thinking about at your age? Don't tell me you're in love. Love? Hello. Wow. Sounding pretty than Defensive. Mom, please. People pass by, their silhouettes illuminated by a lavender haze as early dusk settles over the town. The busy clamor of the workday faded into a choir murmur. What is it about this time of day that makes me think so much? Like about that feeling. I'd do anything to know what that was. What was I searching for? Ooh. Ooh. It happened almost too fast for me to process. A bump against my shoulder. An inexplicable tug, like a string pulled taut. And the voice, clear and true, like a siren's call. Sorry. Ooh. But they were gone. And before co and before I could register how crazy it was, I was chasing after them. V Van down the street, pulled by an invisible string. Wait, come back. My body was no longer my own. It was possessed by a singular thought. Who was that? And that sensation. What was that? Thoughts swirled in my head, a chaotic jumble of questions, only made worse by the growing crowd. Left, right, forward, backward. Where was I running? Why was I running? I didn't have the answers. I only hoped that invisible force guiding me would be my compass, steer me in the direct, the one direction I needed to find them. But with each passing moment, its pull grew weaker and weaker. Where? Van! I turned to see mom gripping. I turned to see mom gripping my wrist in bewilderment. What are you doing? That's dangerous. You can't just go running off like that. We just moved here. I wouldn't know what to do if you got lost. But that person, where did they go? I didn't even get a chance to see what they look like or get their name. A foreign feeling filled me 
as I stared into the busy street, a mixture of emptiness, longing, pain. While I'd never experienced it before, if I had to describe it, I'd say it was heartbreak. Man. Man. He said hurt. Hope that guy's okay though. Same. <laughs> Hope he good. He probably thinks I'm rude. Ramming into him and running off. Uh, well, no point in lingering in it now. I rushed onwards. I was so late for this interview. As I pulled my phone out, just to see how late I was, I realized I was nowhere near- No way. You gotta be kidding me. When did I lose it? Did I forget it at home? Cool. No, I definitely had it on me to the day. So when... <laughs> Sorry. Don't tell me I dropped it then. There was no way I could go back and get it now. I could hardly remember the specific area he ran- we ran into each other. And by now, with how busy the city got at this time, it's probably trampled on or kicked into the gutter somewhere. Great. Just great. I continued running to my interview, cursing my bad luck the entire way. Ugh, what a hassle. It wasn't enough for me to bomb that interview. I just had to lose my phone too. I pulled out my new replacement phone to set it up. Ooh. Look out. You get it, Alexis. 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 Welcome to your new phone. My name is Alexis and I will be assisting you with setting everything up. In order for me to best assist you, it would be helpful for me to know how to refer to you. What is your preferred name? Let's do Sleepy. Don't just sleep your above. We'll just sleep. It seems you go by Sleepy. Is this correct? This cannot be changed later. Yes, it's correct. I don't think I'm in my restroom. It's a pleasure to meet you, Sleepy. What are your pronouns? Oh, he, him, she, her, they, them. Okay, it's she, her. I wish they had. So it would be correct to say Sleepy goes by she, her. Thank you, Alexis. Is this right? This can't be changed later. Yes, that's right, Alexis. Splendid. I almost... I'm almost finished setting everything up for you. The last step will be choosing your avatar. This icon will be used on messaging interfaces. Oh. Okay. These are all good. Ah. Uh, let's see. I am going to go with in the road. Highest. Um, perfect. Let's test things out to make sure you're happy with how everything looks. Please type a message to type. test your air card. Hello, boy. Hello. Hello, boy. Hello, boy. Hello, boy. Hello, boy. Are you satisfied with this icon? Yes. In that case, everything should be set up. Thank you for your patience, Sleepy. Finally. I flopped onto my bed, completely exhausted by today's events. Hopefully, a good night's rest would make me feel great about it all along. Hopefully, a good night's rest would make me forget about it all. Deja vu. 
Wait, don't take him away. Sleepy. I look like you. His hand was yanked from mine, and the comforting warmth of his hold was replaced by a lonely chill. I rushed to the grounds, desperate to keep him by my side. But they shoved me away, and I fell to the rough, cold prison floor. No! The jagged stone growl scraped against me as I ran to the guards again. But I was too slow, and the cell door clanged shut. I pulled on the iron bars, willing to open them, but like the guards, they held no responses to my cry. With no other choice, I watched my love get dragged away. Oh. He yelled something back, but our growing distance muddled his words. As his silhouette faded into the shadows, a piece of me was stolen with him. Ooh. Sweat clung to my shirt. Air entered my lungs in short bursts. My chest ached with emptiness. The feeling of loss lingered in my body. That dream again. No matter how many times I had it, I could never shake the grip it had on me. As I slowly came to, my breathing steadied and my heart rate slowed. I fell back against my pillow. How many times has it been at this point? They started when I lost my phone in high school. I could still vividly remember that day. It was like everything had gone wrong. The interview my phone and then to top it all off that devastating dream i groaned as i tried to fall asleep Vanilla though as i did every time it visited me <laughs> i groaned as i tried to fall asleep Vanilla though as it did every time it visited me memories of the dream tugged at me until morning I groaned groggily in the cafe. After last night's dream, the remainder of my sleep had been restless, and I found myself in extra need of my morning coffee. Alvarez? The quiet rustle of bed sheets as the morning sun filters through thin curtains. Raku? The loneliness of a shadowy forest in the midst of a thundering storm. Van. Up, up. The lingering warmth of someone's hands once clutched in mine. Since I was born, I've had a condition doctors call. Synesthesia. Synesthesia. I've had a condition and doctors call it synesthesia. Usually, people with this condition perceive multiple senses together, like seeing colors when listening to music. It seems to be a particularly rare form where I feel names. Some names are soft and gentle, while others are harsh and demanding. When I was younger, it was distracting, but as I've grown older, I've gotten used to the sensations. Sleepy? Oh. After hearing my name, I went to retrieve my order. But as I reached for my coffee, someone else's hand almost ran into mine. Uh Here comes the boy. voice acted i'm not ready it's fine we're fine it's fine no that was my bad i wasn't looking where i was going my drinks just i to grab my order but our hands kept threatening to collide as we fumbled for our minds uh 
you go first. Wait. <laughs> now that the thread of either of us running into each other was gone, we easily retrieved our drinks. <laughs> How many people does it take to pick up a single copy? Normally, I'd say one, but it seems today I stand corrected. Maybe I'm an exception then. And have a good day. You too. Uh, so, I walked towards the cafe exit, but a familiar face popped into view once again. Here, I got it. <laughs> she held open the door. I murmured my thanks and walked into the morning streets. The bookstore is having a sale today. I should still have time to drop by before work. There were a couple books I had wanted to pick up and Asher's birthday was coming up. He really likes photography books, but I don't even know which ones are good. Or maybe an art book? Didn't he mention the recent Studio Ghibli movie that he liked? I noticed the man from the cafe walking nearby. Again? He's not following me, is he? Same. As our eyes meet, we glanced away, as if unsure before walking faster. I slowed my own plate. I slowed my own pace, relieved at the growing distance between us. He seems spooked too. Looks like he's not following me. I guess it was just a coincidence. But as I continued towards the bookstore, I realized it now seemed like I was the one following him. With each turn into a different street, my footsteps mirrored his, and inevitably, his uncertainty turned into outright weariness. Oh, jeez. With one last turn into a different street, he stopped and waited for me to catch up. Listen, I'm not following you. Could you imagine? I ended up blurting that out. Hopefully, that doesn't make me look more suspicious. Um, so this isn't... You're not a fan? Is he a pop star? Fan? Why would I be a fan? Never mind. If you weren't following me, then why haven't I been able to shake you for the past 10 blocks? I'm trying to catch this book sale before work today. At the bookstore on 16th and Central? Yes, there. That's a coincidence. I was headed there too. Oh, I guess that explains why we haven't been able to shake each other. Either that or fade. Don't play with me, sir. Both of us seem to relax at this revelation. Then should we walk together? Instead of us one trailing behind the other? Hmm. I don't know. The latter sounds awfully tempting. Didn't get your fix after the past block. I've come this far. Might as well come in, right? He laughed and turned as we headed to the bookstore together. By the way, got a name I can call you? You didn't happen to pick it up at the coffee shop? Can't say I did. What a shame. Next time, I'll pay better attention to the names they call out. I'm glad you learned your lesson. Oh, person. It's sleepy, by the way. Nice. Names fan. It's my boy voice, guys. So what are you trying to pick up at the sale? Just a couple photography books. Usually they're expensive, but this is one of the few occasions where they get discounted. Photography? Is it a hobby of yours or do you just like the book? You could say it's a hobby, but I like the books as an inspiration for my own works. Wow. Works. Wow. He's a, he's a, he's a doctor. <laughs> Sounds like you take your hobby seriously. 
Just the little. And you? What are you eyeing for the sale? Actually, funny you should ask. I'm in the market for some photography book recommendations. It's for a friend of mine. Another coincidence. Lucky you ran into me then. <laughs> this is just a very cute, like, let's just take a second. Let's take As we entered the bookstore, the smell of pressed paper and dried ink surrounded us. Come on, I can show you my favorites. Van led us to the photography section and scanned the shelves before expertly picking out a few choice selections. Is this friend of yours into books for the pictures or tips? Um, I think picture. I don't know. Got it. Let's see. Ben shifted through the bunch and laid three medium-sized books on the table. One showed a black and white still of a woman, another blooming flower field, and the last one, a looming skyscraper over a busy street. If we're talking pure aesthetics, these are some of the most underrated, in my opinion. I peered at the image of the blossoming wildflowers decorating a vast field, framed by a towering mountaintop. A simple, one-worded title in geometric text read, Keyframes. Sounds pretty. As I flipped through the book, dreamy landscapes depicting majestic mountain ranges, serene stars, night skies, and bubbling creeks called out to me. Van nodded as he observed me. A lot of people like landscapes. Makes sense. Appreciation for nature. The idea that you can see the picture in real life. All that jazz. Yeah, I love to visit any of these places. Especially this one. I pointed to a picture of- Ooh, I get a choice. Okay, let's see. Oh, mountains, flower, riverside. I do like water. I'm a water person. But a flower field? Cottage core era? Looks like flower. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's do flower field. Hope you make it there one day. There we go. <laughs> In this lifetime? Bad chance. Never say never. I smiled at the thought and continued going through the images. I really like this book. He seems to know what he's talking about. So have you always been a photography book connoisseur? Or did that come after picking up photography? Hmm. After. When I first got into photography, I just took pictures of whatever I liked. Now, I try to be more thought thoughtful about how I approach my process. It's not just about what I'm capturing, but also how I'm capturing it. What do you mean, how? Anyone could take a picture, but everyone's approach is different. The way they capture composition, lighting, colors, even their choice of subject. My style may not be the same, but I take inspiration from all types of photos, editorial, landscape, still life. Hmm. I tried to study the elements he had just discussed on the book's cover. So the subject of this picture is the flower field and the composition um van chuckled before leaning over me ah a faint earthy smell of pine followed him oh yo he smells nice landscape pictures are unique compared to editorial or still life pictures let me show you he pointed to the woman in the editorial photo as he illustrated his points. 
Our fingers brushed against each other. What the? Van jumps it back, causing the book to slip from my hands and fall to the floor. Ooh. Sorry. It's alright. He got really shocked just from that light touch. After returning the book to me and regaining his composure, Van cleared his throat and pointed to the two books. This time, he seemed more careful about any accidental physical contact. See how in this photo, there's just one woman in a blank background? Yeah. In the landscape picture, the flower field is framed against the sky, clouds, and mountains. Yeah, there's more going on. Exactly. That kind of background wouldn't work in this image of the woman, right? Or it wouldn't have the same effect. So that choice is what you try to study? Right. Mm. So, even if you don't take the same type of pictures, analyzing the thought process can still inspire you? Looks like he puts a lot of thought into his art. How long have you been doing this? Photography? I'd say eight years. But I've been an artist for longer. Oh, what kind of art do you do? I started with drawing, but painting was my main medium until I switched to photography. And you haven't looked back since? Haven't gotten the chance to. Oh. Shoot. I rushed to the window where the sound of the rain pelting the building mixed with rumbling thunder. Uh, no. I dragged my hand down my face, cursing the fact I didn't bring an umbrella with me. Everything. Okay. Yeah, I just... I don't know how I'm going to get to work in this rain. If you don't have an umbrella, I have a poncho you can use. I always carry one because of my camera. You wanna borrow it? I'll borrow anything you give me. Oh, uh, man, I couldn't ask you to do that. You're not asking. I'm offering. I don't mind. I can always buy another one. But what about you? The thunderstorm. I'll wait out. Don't worry. I think you need this more than me. I pulled out a foldable poncho and handed it to me. Thank you. The sound of the storm grew louder. Rain came down harder by the second. I'm going to be late at this rate. In that case, I really need to get going. Sorry, Van. It was nice meeting you, though. I turned, upset I couldn't get the books I wanted after it all. Oh, wait. His hand grabbed my wrist, lingering there for a moment before releasing me. Sorry. I don't want to make you late. But is it cool if I give you my number? I know we just met, but... Oh, sure. Here. I handed my phone to Van. Answering a little too enthusiastic. I handed my phone to Van. He smiled as he quickly entered his number before returning it to me. Testing, testing. LOL. <laughs> Very loud and clear. There we go. Nice. Now I'll actually let you go. Wouldn't want you being late for work if you need to. He needs to stop. <laughs> Might be too late for that, but it's alright. Well, say sorry to your boss for me. I'm sure she'll appreciate it. Bye, Van. See you later. See you, sleepy. Heard from the store. A notification from my phone, from whom I can only assume was my coworker. I'm coming, I'm coming. As I pulled my phone out, I saw the message was actually for Van. 
By the way, I can get the book you were looking at. I can't make you do that. I'm offering. Besides, me rambling about photography is why you didn't have time to buy the book in the first place. It's the least I can do. Do you normally buy books for strangers you just met, or is it me? And give them your poncho? Not normally. So I'm an exception? You could say that. Mm. Fine, I'll take you up on it. Then I can return your poncho too. Rest your work, arriving a few minutes late. But at least not soaking wet on top of that. And done. Nothing as good as the end of a work day. I made the last changes needed to the business proposal and logged off for the day. Jeez, so much work. I haven't been able to catch a break. As I sorted through my messages, I noticed a missed one from Van. Just bought your book. Let me know when you want to pick it up. Actually, just finished work if you're free tonight. Good to see you already. <laughs> Have you had enough for me for one day? I'd say it's the opposite. I have plans tonight though. So I wouldn't be able to treat you to a full-fledged date unless you're willing to wait until late. I'll be at this address if you want to pick up pick it up today. Just let me know. I can swing by. Oop. Moment. Okay. I can swing by. I have time. Plus it's Friday. So lucky for you, I have a late curfew. <laughs> Definitely seems to be my lucky day. See you soon. See you soon. Oh, this is so cute. It hurts. Okay. Rows of pictures highlighted with fluorescent spotlights hung from a lofty ceiling. My footsteps echoed against the smooth wooden floor as I observed the various collections on display. I slowed to a stall at a set of grayscale Im images. So pretty. The crowd on the platform insisted on showing her in different directions. Each touch was uncomfortable, but purely accidental until it wasn't. She looked at the person who bumped into her and they were already walking away. Do I know you? Tether. She reached for him desperately as he finally collapsed onto the floorboards with a weak grunt. The deal is done, he whispered. She sobbed and rushed to close the distance between them. Circle. There is a circle of life. From birth to death to decay to feeding the living. There's life beyond the rot that provides energy for new growth. Wow. Each image portrayed something different, but there was a clear theme woven into each of the pieces a sense of fate. A chance encounter, the inevitable turn of time, the devastation of destined tragedy. My chest tightened at the collection. Sleepy, you made it. I turned to Van approaching me with an excited grin on his face. Hey Van, you mentioned you would be at an art exhibit. Some people would say that is the perfect date spot. Here? Well, I guess it's true, but considering this is my exhibit, it's probably a bit pretentious. 
making my day here. Your exhibit? Wait, this entire collection is yours? <laughs> He's so cute. Man let out a bashful laugh as he rubbed the back of his neck. Yeah. Amazing. It's beautiful. You understood how much of a photographer you are. I felt a slight heat on my cheeks remembering our first meeting. I asked him if he did photography as a hobby, and here he is with an entire public exhibit. At my compliment, Van relaxed in relief, his eyes sparkling warmly at me. Glad you like it. Come with me. I have your book. Is it okay to give it to me now? Aren't you busy with uh, whatever artists do at their own exhibit? It's fine. It won't take long. He led me to the back door of the gallery, and we entered a small studio room. Uh, just a second. It's right here. <sighs> he emptied a satchel onto one of the tables and the photography book, along with some brushes and eraser and a medium-sized canvas split out. On the canvas were two figures reaching for one another. It echoed the collection on display in the event. And yet... Ooh. And yet, something about this specific image tugged at me. What's this? Dan's eyes followed my gaze to the painting. Oh, just the piece I've been working on for a while, actually. Remember how I used to draw and paint? Uh-huh. Then you got into photography. Right. Well, I've always had this feeling inside of me. It's the whole reason I got into art. It's hard to describe, but it's like I'm being pulled to something. Or I'm searching for it. I guess you could call it my purpose. Some nice eyebrows. I've been trying to capture it all my life. For a while I thought I could with photography, but it's never been right. Is that why this looks so similar to the photos outside? You're trying to draw that feeling? I... yeah, basically. I thought if I created it myself, with my own two hands, it would stop gnawing at me. Oh, that... I wasn't sure if I could relate to Van's dilemma. This feeling of needing to create something, but it never coming out quite right. But it sounded frustrating. I'm sorry to hear that. It's a beautiful piece, though. Thanks. I just... it's driving me crazy. I feel like I'm so close, but it's still missing something. Mm. Do you mind if I see? He nodded, and I picked up the canvas. A grayscale painting where two figures seemed to be ripped from one another. It was beautiful, with a haunting sense of loss. My chest ached with an eerie emptiness, a longing. Something about it felt familiar. Something about it reminded me of last night's dream. Mm. I know, it's a more depressing piece. <laughs> no, it's, it's not. I mean, I feel like I've lost something when I look at it, but... It's not in a negative way. It just felt familiar as all. Well. Sorry for that awkward silence. Probably not the kind of reaction an artist is looking for. All good. It's similar to the photographs outside, so it makes sense that it looks familiar. That... But it also reminds me of a dream I had. Really? What was it about? Nothing too profound. Just... One of those dreams where you're in love with a random stranger. 
No way, am I going to tell him I actually felt heartbroken over it? He's gonna think I'm so dramatic. And I am. I do see what you mean, though, if... about it missing something. Right? Feels like I've thought about everything, but... I just don't know what it needs. He was right. I could tell there was so many rich emotions in the piece. Grief, devastation, heartbreak, and yet... It needed more. I thought back to last night's stream. How, if I was actually in that position, I would give anything to be reunited with the person ripped from me. How desperately I would cling to the hope that we would be together again. I almost wanted to have a happy ending. Like, they'll still be together? Maybe not now, but... One day. I know that goes against the whole point of the current piece, though. Just a moment to admire the art. The art. Van, Van searched through his pile of brushes before pulling one with a thin bristle. With unbelievable focus, he dipped his brush in paint and leaned towards the painting. After a steady breath, he added a pop of color to the canvas with one smooth stroke. He continued adding small details here and there before finally leaning back. I didn't dare utter a word, afraid I'd break his concentration. This artist is just fantastic. When he finished, a red string connected the two people. It was a small touch, and yet the piece felt more whole. Tragic that they were inextricably tied, <laughs> but were being separated. And yet endlessly romantic that the string wasn't broken. Perhaps one day, they would meet once again. Like that? I... Yeah. That... Uh, that was it. It's so simple, but I... I can't believe I'd never thought to tie them together. Especially with this... Feeling that I was being pulled to create this. Thank you. But without you... I barely did anything. I was just thinking out loud. Still, you helped me complete it. I've been chasing this idea for years. And after one day with you, <laughs> I'm starting to think fate sent you to be my muse. Oh no. Not the cheesy artist pickup line. <laughs> it's a no-go, huh? Try again. Uh, I'll save myself the embarrassment, but... Thank you. Honestly, I've been stuck on this piece for literally my entire life. Anyways, I'll stop boring you with my art nonsense. <laughs> I have to wrap up the exhibit, but it should be over soon. Then the real date begins. Sounds good. I explored the rest of the art exhibit with a greater appreciation now that I knew Van was the artist behind the collection. Oh, this one's nice too. Sleepy. Sorry for the wait. It's no problem. I've just been appreciating the pictures. You don't have to lie for my sake. I wasn't. I actually like your art. I never would have been able to enjoy this if it weren't for running into you. I'm glad fate sent me to be your mute. Remind me of that pony line. I can't believe I actually said that. Are you regretting it? Depends. Did it work? Heck yeah, dude! Yes! I hate to admit that I liked it. Wow. So, you like that kind of stuff? I'll make sure to keep that in mind. I can't wait to hear all the artist pickup lines you come up with. 
Don't know if I'll be able to top the muse one, but I'll try not to disappoint. Dan offered his arm to me. I took it as he led us from the exhibit. So did you happen to plan anything for our date night amidst all the exhibit chaos? I think you make the exhibit out to be bigger than it was. But I do have an idea. Tonight there's a meteor shower that I wanted to check out. You wanna come? Oh yes, let's go. That's so fun. That's a good first date. Anybody out there? Just know. It's a fantastic first date. Oh. Van drove us to a mountain overlook. Where the glimmering stars speckled the midnight blue sky. Ah, looks like it hasn't started yet. Perfect. We exited the car. The starry night hung over us. The city spanned below us. Even without the shooting stars, it was a scene to behold. Pretty. My words faded with a yawn. Are you tired? We can go. No, it's alright. We just got here. Besides, I want to see the stars. A little tired. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. Had a bad dream. Really? <sighs> Must have been something else to make you lose sleep like that. It's weird. I've actually gotten it a couple of times. But every time, I wake up just as shaken up. Flashes of the dream, the cold prison walls, the harsh guards, the desperation in my voice, they surface. And with them, the tightening in my chest returned. The details of the dream are usually hazy, but the last thing I always remember is the heartbreak I felt after. Like I lost a part of myself. It's weird. I didn't even know the other person. I can't even remember their name. But for some reason, I can't forget them. The way they make me feel. Um, sorry. I didn't mean to be a downer. Like I said, it's just this dream I get sometimes. <laughs> I swear, I'm not usually this dramatic over them. No, no, don't worry. That's not it. He shifted his weight between his feet, as if uncertain. Uh, in fact, it's the opposite. I get it. I get a dream like that, too. I've had it since I was in high school. Really? Me too! You've had this dream since high school, too? Cr crazy coincidence, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's one way of putting it. Yeah, I don't tell people about it anymore. <laughs> Stopped trying after the first couple of crazy stares I got. Oh, no, Not sure no. how many other details match, but mine always starts in a prison cell. Someone gets yanked away from me. Your standard stuff. I mean, the dream itself is generic enough, but the loss I feel afterwards is unbelievable. It inspired that piece I showed you, the one you helped me finish today. The painting? Yep. You mentioned that feeling of being an inspiration for all your works. Does that mean your exhibit today too? You got a sharp memory, huh? That's right. The dream is the feeling I've been trying to recreate in all my pieces. Maybe that's why I connected to so many of your pieces. I could help you complete the painting. Aren't you lucky I had the same dream right before stumbling into you today? I told you, didn't I? Fate sent you to be my muse. You say that's all your dates? Have to say, this is a first. I chuckled and shook my head. Ew. To think we had the same dream. What are the chances? Wait, don't take them away. Please. Creepy. His hand was yanked from mine, and the comforting warmth of his cold was replaced by a lonely chill. By the way, got a name I can call you? You didn't happen to pick it up at the coffee shop? Can't say I did. What a shame. 
Next time, I'll pay better attention to the name. Next time, I'll pay better attention to the names they call out. I'm glad you learned your lesson. It's sleepy, by the way. Nice. Name's Van. The lingering warmth of someone's hand once clutched in mine. Hmm. Do you, you want to hear another crazy coincidence? You have more? <laughs> I'm going to start thinking you're making them up. Well, I will say this one's harder to believe. In my dream, one of the last things I remember was the feeling of someone's hands and mine. I thought the last thing you remembered was heartbreak. The last physical thing I remember. Got it, got it. Uh, what about it? When we met, I got a similar feeling. You did? What do you mean? Well, I have... Synesthesia? Well, I have synesthesia. When I hear people's names, I also feel physical sensations. Like the tickle of a whisper against my cheek. Things like that. Usually, I don't pay too much attention to it. And now that I think about it, the feeling I got when you told me your name was just like the one from my dream. The lingering warmth of someone's hand once clutched in mine. I laughed nervously, connect connecting all those dots was starting to make me feel like a conspiracy theorist. It sounds like I'm making it up when I say it out loud, but some coincidence, right? Coincidence or fate? Have you ever experienced that sensation before? This specific one? Not that I can remember, actually. Do you want to hear my own crazy coincidence? Oh no. Not you too. <sighs> Look at the stars. I have a condition like yours. When I touch someone for the first time, I get this feeling like... Deja vu. You know when you meet someone, but they feel so familiar, it's like you knew them in a past life? It's yes. like that. With you, though, it was much more... visceral. I felt like I'd found someone I'd been searching for. So the subject of this picture is the flower field? And the composition... Um... Van chuckled before leaning over me. A faint, earthy smell of pine followed him. The landscape pictures are unique compared to the editorial. It's the life pictures. Let me show you. He pointed to the woman in the editorial photo as he illustrated his points. Our fingers brushed against each other. Van jolted back, causing the book to slip from his hands from my hands and fall to the floor. Oh. Sorry. It's alright. He got really shocked just from a light touch. Is that why he reacted like that? Van rubbed the back of his neck and turned towards the outlook. He let out a rueful laugh. It sounds like another cheesy pickup line, but I swear it's more than that. In fact, I didn't want to tell you. Thought you'd get creeped out. But I can't help but feel like the universe keeps sending me these signs that I was meant to run into you. I rushed to the guards, desperate to keep them by my side. But they shoved me away and I fell to the rough, cold prison floor. No! The jagged stone ground scraped against me as I ran to the guards again. But I was too slow. And the cell door clanged shut. I pulled on the iron bars, willing them open. But like the guards, they held no response to my cries. With no other choice, I watched my love get dragged away. Fan! Oh, we finally got the name! It looks like I am. Anyway. Fan. What's that? Is he? Oh, looks like the show started. 
At 11-11, too. Make the wish of your life. Van pulled out his camera, shifting his attention to the starry paths being traced in the sky night. I tried to slow my racing heart as I focused on the meteor shower, but I couldn't stop thinking about the dream. If he's the one from my dream, what does it mean? Is it just chance or is it something deeper? Coincidence or fate? Make your wish already? Oh, um, not yet. You better hurry before you miss your chance. I tried to come up with a wish, but my mind kept returning to last night's dream. The desperation to be with that person again. I wish that one day, I'll be able to make it to the flower field from that book earlier today. With Van. Pretty sure you're not supposed to tell anyone your wish. Otherwise it won't come true. <laughs> Pretend you didn't hear it then. Hear what? <laughs> Perfect. What about you? Did you make a wish? Sure did. It's a secret though. Can't afford to jinx it. If Sleepy is the one from my dream... I hope the universe always pulls us together. Do you think I should begin to believe that there is some truth to the resurrection? Did we in our previous life fool one another? Or is this just deja vu? Kiran Prasa. What about reincarnation? That's something you think is real? Mm, yeah. Huh. Interesting. What do I think? To be honest, it's not really something I cared about it too recently, but lately I've been thinking, I hope it is. Well, thank you so much for spending time with me today. I had a lot of fun with you, and I hope that we can play some more games together and get cozy and get sleepy and light a candle and grab a stuffed animal or two and have a great night.